In the previous module, we introduced the notion of correlated strategies and correlated equilibrium. And uh, we have given the uh, certain uh, uh, correlated strategies which happen to be correlated equilibrium, but those choices were somehow, somehow magical. Uh, so, uh, in, in this very short module, we are going to discuss how we actually can find correlated equilibrium. Um, so, this is essentially a set of linear equations. And now, uh, we can co contrast this with the uh, mixed strategy Nash equilibrium where uh, the, the equations for more than two players is not linear anymore, but here in, in correlated equilibrium, uh, the equations, the, uh, the constraints of correlated equilibrium inequalities are all linear. Uh, and why is that? Because we are randomizing not over uh, independent strategies. Our variables are not uh, the, the probability masses are on independent uh, strategy uh, uh, sets of the players. Rather, it is a strategy, uh, so it's a probability mass on the strategy profile itself. And that makes it much easier. So here in this, uh, in this context, our uh, variables will be pi of s. So, uh, if you want to call pi s, this is a uh, variable in this optimization problem and where s is uh, belonging to the capital S, that is the strategy profile of all the players. Now, uh, we have two set of constraints. So, the first thing is essentially the, uh, from, the, from the definition of correlated equilibrium. Uh, so, I am not going to explain it once more, it is just the, uh, just uh, writing the, the constraint of uh, correlated equilibrium. You see that uh, you can actually uh, put uh, the, the, the inequality on one side, so you can actually write this equivalently as sum over pi of si, s minus i, while you are taking the sum over cap, uh, uh, small s minus i uh, on capital S minus i. And you have this ui of uh, small si s minus i minus of ui si prime s minus i. So another way of rewriting uh, the same expression. Now, uh, so this is certainly a linear equation because your variables are this. The other uh, thing is just a uh, uh, just a constraint uh, that uh, it has to be a probability distribution. So therefore, uh, all the numbers pi of s should be non-negative for all s in s in capital S, and it should sum to one. Now let let us count how many inequalities we have. So here, uh, so this inequality is written for every player, and it is also written for every pair of uh, strategies. So this uh, SI and SI prime can be chosen in M uh, square ways and this has to happen for every player. So therefore, there are order N M square number of uh, inequalities here uh, where we are assuming that everybody, every agent has the same size uh, of uh, their strategy sets which is uh, equal to M. Right. So this is uh, clearly polynomial. Uh, now, for this, uh, uh, the pi s greater than or equal to 0, you will have a little, little larger. So, you will have m to the power n number of inequalities because that is because for every player there are m uh, uh, possible strategies and there are n such players. So, this uh, vector s can take m to the power n number of, uh, uh, number of values. That's fine. So, now, uh, now what, uh, what do we have? So we have just uh, explained this uh, uh, the uh, the notion of uh, this uh, finding the correlated equilibrium. Now we are going to compare that with uh, how many uh, uh, how many number of inequalities or computation we needed to do when we are trying to find the Nomic strategy Nash equilibrium. So the mixed strategy Nash equilibrium has total number of support profiles. So just remember that uh, we defined something called K. Uh, which was the uh, the number of uh, 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 support profiles. So you'll have to take for every player. You'll have to take how many number of subsets uh, of their strategy sets there were, and it was two to the power cardinality of S i minus one because we are uh, ignoring uh, the uh, the null set, and you are multiplying for all players in uh, in this set n. So this is certainly, so if SI of all of them is M, 
So uh, this will get multiplied n times and that, that will give you uh, order of 2 to the power mn. So at least you will have to uh, run that, that loop where you are trying to find whether there exists some uh, MSNE or not, uh, which can satisfy uh, those uh, characterization uh, conditions of uh, MSNE 2 to the power mn times. Now the, the number of inequalities in this C, so of course uh, you can look at two things, so order m, uh, nm square and uh, uh, order m to the power n, of course this, this dominates, so therefore it will be order of m, m to the power n. Now this is exponentially smaller than this, this previous number, so if you just take the log of both these numbers, you will see that uh, uh, n will be there in, in both this case, multiplier. Uh, but uh, in one place you will have m, the other place you will have log of m. So it's clearly much less number of inequalities than the, the MSNE. So much easier to compute uh, for, for this uh, correlated equilibrium. So MSNE does not have any other kind of objectives. It is, it is a guarantee where people will, uh, what people will play. But when you have a mediator, the mediator might also like to make, uh, have a certain objective satisfied. So one of them could be, let's say, maximizing the utilities of the players. So what we have actually looked at. So if you, uh, in the in the previous two examples, both in the um, in the case of uh, football, cricket game, or wait and go game, uh, you can have multiple uh, uh, correlated equilibrium. Now the now you have something to choose from. So which uh, correlated equilibrium uh, should be suggested by the by the mediator? Now you can, uh, so you have a bunch of uh, constraints, so you can consider this previous uh, uh, equations 1 and 2 as a bunch of constraints. You, you can also put some objective function, let's say some of the utilities getting maximized, that could be one, uh, one reasonable objective. And then you may have a different uh, pi, so uh, the, the, correlated <coughs> the correlated equilibrium that we are going to uh, suggest might satisfy uh, some additional constraints. So this is not possible in the context of a uh, mixed strategy Nash equilibrium, but it is possible for the context of uh, correlated equilibrium. So the natural thing whenever we are uh, uh, using a new concept is to compare or uh, uh, kind of relate it with the, with the previous equilibrium notions. And in this case, the, the natural thing is the mixed strategy Nash equilibrium uh, and uh, uh, connect the uh, correlated equilibrium with it. Now, how do we define, uh, so what should we uh, conclude? So this theorem essentially says that for every uh, mixed strategy Nash equilibrium sigma star, there exists a correlated equilibrium. So therefore, in all those games where you can have a mixed strategy Nash equilibrium, you, you, you should also have a correlated equilibrium. You can construct a pi star using this sigma star. And the construction is also not difficult. Maybe it is very intuitive, you have already thought about it. Um, if you just multiply those uh, individual uh, probabilities or individual uh, mixed strategies for every player, what you get is essentially your uh, uh, correlated equilibrium, one candidate correlated equilibrium. Uh, all that you need to show that uh, if you multiply, so here what we are doing is sigma i star is a mixed strategy Nash equilibrium for player i and uh, whenever you are defining this pi star for a particular strategy profile, you are just taking the product of all the uh, individual uh, mixed strategies, the, the probability masses of individual mixed strategies and multiplying them. Uh, so this is, this is not enough uh, when you do this, you will also have to ensure, you will also have to use the, the, uh, the fact that uh, those two conditions that we have used in the mixed strategy Nash equilibrium characterization, there were two conditions, right? Uh, all the utilities should be same for the support and uh, also uh, everything, the, the expected utility in the support should be at least as much as the, uh, uh, the utility outside the support. So use this uh, and uh, try to find this out, I am leaving this as a homework. Let me just give you the complete picture of what we have discussed so far in the normal form game. So we have uh, discussed various kind of equilibrium uh, and we have seen that uh, some games may have those equilibrium and some may, games do not, but there is a kind of a containment, a kind of a gradual uh, movement among these equilibrium policies. So if you look at all the games that has uh, uh, PSNEs, 
we know those PSNEs are uh, automatically MSNEs, uh, degenerate MSNEs. So therefore, uh, those games are uh, uh, strictly living wi within the set of all games. So these are actually sets of games. Sets of games that has uh, such an equilibrium. And the, with the last result, we can say that if you have a game which has a, a mixed strategy Nash equilibrium, you can construct a, a, a correlated equilibrium. So therefore, all those games are already uh, within this set. So even correlated equilibrium is guaranteed to exist because MSNEs are guaranteed to exist. So let me just uh, summarize all the points that we have uh, discussed in the context of normal form games. Uh, in the next module, we are going to start a different kind of a a game a different game representation so in the normal form games what we have discussed is that uh, of course uh, before formally defining normal form games we have uh, talked about these ideas of rationality intelligence uh, and common knowledge these are fairly general uh, ideas and depending on which kind of games you are looking at or which kind of uh, rationality uh, which kind of context you are uh, you are uh, trying to discuss these definitions might vary a little bit. So here we have seen that we tweak the idea of rationality. So instead of playing independently, maybe playing with the uh, with a mediator or maybe a randomizing device is better because it is giving them more expected utility. So that is that is the uh, that is how rationality evolves depending on which kind of uh, uh, settings you are looking at. We have also distinguished between what is a strategy and what is an action. This will become more uh, evident when we discuss the, the next uh, type of games. And we discussed various uh, notions, uh, strict and weak dominance, and then the corresponding equilibrium notions. And uh, then we have discussed about if one player unilaterally deviates, uh, what kind of equilibrium you can guarantee. Those are pure strategy Nash equilibrium. And you generalize it for mixed strategy Nash equilibrium, and this existence is guaranteed by the Nash theorem. Then we discuss the, the characterization result for MSNE. Uh, now, this uh, the hardness of computing is, of course, um, uh, an issue for uh, MSNE. Now, uh, in in this module, we we have just uh, relaxed this uh, to a trusted mediator based uh, uh, based approach where. Uh, the strategies are no longer taken independently by the players, rather they are collectively taken and suggested to each, each of these players and these players uh, in their best interest should follow them. Those are called correlated equilibrium.